This is Carl from Nile blowing it up on Capital Chaos TV. Hey guys, Aldo here, Capital Chaos TV, and it is my honor to be here with Carl of Nile. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Um, Nile has a new album, and uh, I think it's pretty badass. I'm here to ask some questions to Carl about it. Um, how's uh, first of all, man? How's the tour been? How's uh, how's the fans been? How's everyone been receiving the new album? Uh, so far, so good. We're about halfway through. Uh, it's six weeks long. Uh, Nile and Terrorizer. Uh, it's going really well. Um, uh, the new songs seem to be going over particularly well. Uh, we've been playing three tracks from the new album, uh, Long Shadows of Dread, Vile Nilotic Rites, and Snake Pit Mating Frenzy. Uh, any particular reason why you chose those three? Uh, they seem like the most conducive to the live setting, uh, especially for people who might not be familiar with the record yet. What's different on this album uh, compared to the past uh, eight, right? This is number nine. Um, how do uh, how do the new members impact who who Nile is, and what 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 are you guys about? Well, uh, I think this record is all about that. It's uh, really exploring what this new lineup is capable of. What is our potential right now? What can we do right now? Not what we did 20 years ago or 10 years ago or anything like that. You know, what can this group of guys do? Um, so I think the record is very reflective of that. I agree. Um, the vocals um, really took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting uh, two other voices on there. How did you, uh, I guess, find the mix of who to bring in during certain parts of certain songs? Because uh, there are just some certain parts that are really... Like, when it's more than one voice, I mean, doing that real deep, it, it just, you know, it uh, makes me want to fucking punch something. That's the goal. Yeah. Make people violent. When we're uh, working on the songs, uh, we just kind of carve it up between us. Like, one guy will go, well, I think I could do that. And then someone else will say, well, I could do this thing over here. Or maybe we should do this together. And we just work it out. Now, you've been touring for a long fucking time. What is your worst touring experience you've ever had? <laughs> there are so many. <laughs> uh, in the U.S., I guess, to keep it simple. In the U.S., all right. That narrows it down. Uh, that would be... Uh, we play this little bar and grill in Virginia, and... Uh, it started off well enough, right? But uh, some girlfriend in one of the local bands that was on the bill came into our backstage and she started off with, my boyfriend is so drunk. <laughs> and dude, that should have been our first clue. <laughs> that shit was gonna go south. Uh, but uh no we had to we had to experience that for ourselves it was it was terrible uh not only was the boyfriend drunk but she was drunk too and uh she got right in front she kept trying to spill her beer like on me right and on my stuff right i got a lot of expensive pedals you know right so she's right there in front of the stage you know and we're trying to get going and uh She's got the beer bottle like this. She's leaning and, you know, half drunk. And, and you can see she's about to fucking spill it. So I snatched it from her. I took her uh, beer right out of her hand. Uh, set it back. I thought it was over. I thought that was the end of it, right? Two minutes later, there she is again with another beer, right? Same long neck Budweiser kind of thing. And she got again, same thing starts happening, right? She's leaning and swaying back and forth. I got the bottle and she's about to spill it on me. So I go to snatch it from her, right? And uh, this time she holds on, right? So now we're like this. We're going like this, right? And she starts pulling harder and harder. So I just say, okay, fuck it. And that's when she goes, pow! 
and busts her own lip open with oh, her beer, right? Oh, shit. Uh, I was like, oh, man, I don't want nothing to do with this. And next thing I knew, her boyfriend was just coming out of the fucking woodwork. Uh, there was a ridiculous bar ball uh, broke out. Um, so we ended up not even fucking playing because of this uh, crazy bitch and her lunatic boyfriend. Yeah. What year was this, more or less? This was 04, I think it was. Uh, Tony and John were in the band at the time. Uh, what other music other than death metal do you listen to that to help you, uh, um, um, you know, with with inspire you, I guess, for Niles' material? Um, I heard your uh, your solo album you put out. Of, what was it? Two, three years ago. Uh, Since I did that record, there was a newer one you put out. Uh, more recently, you no, know, uh, just a um, Carl Sanders. Uh, God, what was it? that's been ten years already. Oh my God! What is it? Jesus Christ? <laughs> um, how did that? How do you? How do you go from Nile to to that? Because that was completely taken taken away from from your material with Nile. So easy to understand if if you see my day like. Uh, not only do I listen to my own band every day out on tour, but every other band on the tour, every single local band, every single day that I'm out on tour, I hear death metal all day long. And I love death metal, but I think every once in a while hearing something a little different is good for the sanity. Yeah. It's... um. Kind of a 2020 there, yeah, I understand. Um, now, what makes uh, Vile Nilotic Rites stand out from the rest of your uh, of your catalog? That's a great question. Uh, you know, uh, on the one hand, we are doing exactly what we love to do, so we're still true to ourselves. Um, I think this new one is, you know, the, the approach to the songwriting is a little different. Uh, we've got a couple new guys, so there's a fresh attitude, a fresh energy. Um, but it's not wholly dissimilar from, you know, what we've been doing for the last 20 years. Um, if you're expecting it to be radically different, you know, in thematic content, well, it's still what Nile does, just maybe a fresh spin on it. I mean, I think if it was any more different, it wouldn't really be Nile at that exactly, point. Exactly, exactly. You know, fans have a reasonable expectation. Like, if you've established your sound, that when they go to listen to something new, they should still be able to relate to it. If you go too far, you know, astray, left or right, then you're, you're playing with fire. That's how you get St. Anger. <laughs> uh, what songs are you most proud of on the new album? Uh, Seven Horns of War, That Which Is Forbidden, We Are Cursed. Yeah, I like We Are Cursed. That was a really good one. Uh, <laughs> it's not everybody's yeah. favorite because it's you know it's a dark kind of song, um, so it's not for everybody. But for the people who are into that, man. Now um, about you, like how did you? go from because in this new album it's uh, way more technical um that i've noticed which is a really good thing you've learned to incorporate that with death like the technical death metal with the death metal um but it's still i mean you guys are still nile how did you uh how did you i guess that transition from your traditional playing style to this a little more uh technical playing style uh, a lot of guitar lessons the last couple of years uh a lot of just playing guitar every day all day don't stop until you're the best. If there's someone better than you, then you got to keep going, right? The truth is, every time you turn around, there's somebody better. Like, in every single town you go to, there are great guitarists. There's some guitarists in my hometown that play circles around me. So, I don't think it's necessarily being the best. That's impossible. But you can be the best you can be, right? You can reach your own fullest best potential yeah god damn i never saw it that way you got me <laughs> you got me thinking about my own life um 
how has being in Nile changed you as a person overall versus, uh, you know, when you weren't in a band versus now? How has it shaped who you are and who Nile is and just as a, um, as a vocalist, as a musician, what has changed from you being in a band? Well, I've been playing in bands since I was like 16. So that's, that's a long fucking way back. I'm 56. So what's the math on that? It's uh, at least 40 years. 40 years of playing bands. It's pretty much all I know, right? And it's all I can remember. I don't remember what it was like to not be in a band. Yeah. You think you could go to a nine to five job after being in Nile for 20 years? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I really love metal. So I, I really can't see myself doing something else. This is what I gave my life to. This is what I worked for. This was what decades of hard work and sacrifice was for, just to play music. So to go do something else, why? Yeah, that's another lifetime, you know? Yeah, not this one. This lifetime, we're doing Nile. Is there any specific death metal albums that i don't want to say um i'm well i guess let's say inspired you your playing style or your uh your vocals specifically because your vocals stick out from every other death metal band i've ever heard um you can a lot of them you know i don't say all death metal sounds the same but nile stands out from anything else that you play how uh well you know who who inspired you i guess from the old school death metal days uh Gorefest. They did a record called Faults that I think just epitomizes like what death metal stands for. Um, that was very influential. But uh, I noticed you know right away when I started doing vocals um, years ago when I first started um, that my voice didn't sound like everybody else. Uh, so I did a lot of other listening, like I was listening to the Tibetan monks quite a bit. And uh, some of the things that they do were very influential and, in, you know, pointing me in, you know, whatever path I've gone down. Um, I just want to talk about this incident that I saw a few years ago real quick. I believe it was in Russia when you guys were playing with Belfigor a number of years back. Uh, can you explain what happened with uh, that crazy fucking Christian religious dude that tried to fight you guys and spit on you guys? And uh, yeah, Well, uh, they were right-wing fundamentalist Orthodox Russian Catholics. And... Uh, they were politically connected, um, and what they were trying to do was to provoke an incident at the airport so Helmet would fight back and, ergo, get arrested, which would then mean no Belfagor shit. That takes tremendous discipline, because I saw what they, that would, all the shit he was saying to him and spitting at him. And yeah, it took... I mean, we're fucking guys just like anybody else. If you spit in my face, first thing I'm going to do is fucking punch you, right? So for Helmet to have the self-control to not fight back, uh, I, I think was remarkable. Um, but they were going to actually try and, act, you know, physically hurt the dude. And I couldn't stand by and let that happen. Um, no, man, when you see somebody fucking with your metal brother, your tour mate, the guy that you're going to be, you know, living in a tour bus with, you can't let nothing happen to your brothers. you got to stick up for your brothers. Yeah. Any other incidents where any uh, crazy political, uh, religious shit like that happened? Uh, a couple of shows were like that. They actually managed to keep Belfagor from playing at... Uh, I think two of the shows. One of them, they had to play instrumental because of the anti-Christian lyrics in Belfagor's music, uh, which was ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, damn. thanks, Carl. Um, it was real nice uh, meeting you and talking to you. Um, Nile's one of my favorite bands ever, and you guys, now Vilotic writes out now. Uh, it's a great new record by Nile. Thank you. 
I'm Aldo from Capital Chaos. We'll see you guys next time.